Hi everyone and welcome to yet another edition of our podcast where I am joined by the fabulous Dr. Shadnam Daskar, functional medicine practitioner and all around health and nutrition expert. So welcome Dr. Carr. Thank you, Mikhail. That's such a wonderful introduction. So here is my other, uh, my associate who is an even better expert actually in health and nutrition. So uh, what are we talking about today, Mikhail? And just, just a small correction. This is a video that we are doing today. Yes, so sorry. Uh, that's okay. Uh, it hardly matters really. <laughs> Video, the all the all these terms. All, all the, yes, the numerous ways we we you know distribute information. Yes, so. sure. Okay, so today we're talking about a very timely and very relevant subject, no matter where in the world you live, and that is sugar and the impact of sugar on our health. Now, um, we might know, we might not know that sugar is not your friend and there are many reasons for that we've heard of the empty calories and we know that desserts aren't necessarily the best thing to be eating but dr carr why is sugar not your friend okay <clears throat> so uh, sugar is you know essentially because of what sugar contains and I'm just going to share this article which came out recently in the BMJ. And this is, this is an essay by Gary Taubes. And many of you are familiar with Gary Taubes and his book, uh, The Case Against Sugar. And before that, he had written Good Calories, Bad Calories, and Why We Get Fat. Three absolutely fantastic books. So the problem with sugar is essentially what it contains. So what does sucrose contain? It contains... Uh, glucose as well as fructose. So the problem with, with that, and Mikhail can explain it way better than I ever can. So the problem is, as I have highlighted in this article, <clears throat> the um, hypothesis is that sugar has deleterious effects on the human body, independent of its uh, calorific content, and that a distinct causal pathway links consumption to disease. So in simple words, it means the more sugar you eat, the worse your health outcome is. And this goes way beyond the amount of calories that are contained in sugar because very often you'll find, you know, other sweeteners being called as uh, low calorie sweeteners so that the focus is, okay, you're not having sugar because it's the calories in the sugar you're causing a problem versus you're taking something which doesn't have as many calories. But we now know that the calories alone in sugar are not enough because it is the problem is with the fructose component of sucrose. So uh, in regular sugar, Mikhail, what is the percentage of fructose usually present? So generally, um, it's about half and half. Yeah. So in, in regular table sugar, which is made from sugar cane or sugar beets, you have 50% glucose and 50% sucrose. Yeah. So the fructose that, uh, that is in the soup sugar, what it does is it goes directly, primarily it's metabolized in the liver. And this can lead to accumulation of hepatic fat, that is accumulation of liver fat. And this is what causes all the problems with the sugar. Now, when we talk about you know, high fructose corn syrup, the percentage of fructose is just probably just 5% more than regular sugar, right, Mikhail? Yes, it's a 45-55% it's a um, ratio, 55% high fructose corn syrup. But if I may, may say that it doesn't sound like a lot, but when we consider how much sugar we consume on a daily basis and how much high fructose corn syrup we consume, over a day and a week and a month and a year, that's a huge amount of fructose that the liver now has to deal with. And people need to bear in mind that we've often spoken about glucose and, and insulin and how glucose raises blood sugar. And in our previous videos, we've spoken about that and how that can cause fat accumulation. We haven't really spoken about the impact of fructose because fructose does not affect your blood sugar. 
fructose is purely, purely metabolized in the liver. So that little bit extra fructose that you're eating every single day over the day and the week and the month of the year really adds up to what to the work the workload on your liver. Yes. So to put in simple terms, what Mikhail and I talked so far is the fructose component of the sugar. So sugar is made of glucose and fructose. So the fructose component of sugar is the one which causes all the problems because it is metabolized primarily in the liver. And this extra fructose associated with <clears throat> insulin resistance and you know type 2 diabetes and all of that. And insulin resistance, to put it very simply, is when your hormone insulin, the one that your body produces, doesn't do its job well. Now, that's a very simplified way of putting, uh, of explaining insulin resistance. So the other thing is, so we've always thought about, you know, okay, diabetes and obesity and all those things. This is a very interesting uh, article by, Dr. Uh, by James D. Nicolantonio, and he's written a very nice book called The Salt Fix. So um, anyway, salt fix is something we'll talk about another day. But the, he the um, heading here says, in added sugars drive coronary a heart disease via insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia, a new paradigm. So coronary heart disease is essentially heart disease where your the arteries to the heart get blocked. So that is the heart disease that we most commonly talk about and which, if not taken care of, can lead to a heart attack or a myocardial infarction, MI. And that is what is killing a lot of people. So that is... You know, the pathway of how added sugars drive that is through insul insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia is the, in the fancy medical term, to just talk about high insulin. So high insulin itself causes a whole lot of problems. And this is new information. So a lot of it has not really been, you know, distributed out into amongst the medical community. A lot of people are not aware of this. So insulin is a very, very interesting hormone. And I'm just getting to know quite a lot about it now. So what is the problem with the high insulin? I'm not going into all the details. Anyone who's interested can, you know, download the study and read it. So what did they found? They found that, now this is the scary part, 73% of patients who presented with an acute MI, that means a, a heart attack, in the hospital, uh, they had abnormal glucose tolerance with 50% having diabetes. I mean, they didn't know they had diabetes. So 73% is a huge number. And after six months, 43% still had abnormal glucose tolerance. So they were still more prone to diabetes and all these things. And the other part which I have highlighted is, you know, the relationship of insulin with cardiovascular disease. That means heart disease and stroke, which is independent of lipids, blood pressure and blood sugar. Now, many of you are very concerned about the cholesterol and what your cholesterol levels are and the good cholesterol and bad cholesterol and all of that. But in this particular study, they found that the relationship of insulin was way more significant than whatever your cholesterol levels was, whatever your blood pressure was and blood sugar. And lipids, blood pressure, blood sugar are all risk factors for heart disease. I hope I haven't made it sound too complicated. So, Mikhail, what would you like to add to that? I, I think, I, I think that, makes, that makes perfect sense. And what people don't understand, or sometimes what people fail to remember is that the body systems all work together and the body yes. needs to be balance. And when we create an imbalance in one area, it's going to create an imbalance in another. And if our liver is one of the driving organs, it's one of the main organs in our body, we use our liver for a lot. And if we are overtaxing our liver, it's going to impact probably every single health marker that um, that we have, first of all. And the importance of insulin, people often just think of insulin as your blood sugar control hormone, but it's yeah. not. Insulin is your storage and transport hormone. And again, it needs to be in balance. And too much insulin is very stressful for the body. 
and creating too much insulin or having to create too much insulin is again very stressful for the body and and, and along with the creation of insulin and the liver it's very complicated but um, we we need to we need to do our best to maintain that balance and one of the biggest shifts in our diet in the last few hundred years so very 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 recently is the huge amount of sugar that we have been eating and if you don't believe us start looking at the ingredients in every single package that you eat and anything that ends in ose is sugar and high fructose corn syrup is cheaper to produce than sugar and it's slightly slightly sweeter because fructose is much sweeter than sugar. So you use a little less. And food manufacturers have worked this out and are putting it in everything. So if you think that um, the sauce that you're buying, because it doesn't taste sweet, is sugar-free, it's not. It has sugar in it. It's not just the obvious, the obvious things. They put sugar in everything. Mayonnaise, check your mayonnaise. They put sugar in that or a salad dressing. There's sugar in it. Ketchup. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But talking about sugar consumption, now in this article, you can see that over the past 200 years, the average intake of added sugars has increased from four pounds to 120 pounds a year. And as Mikhail often says, I am not the one who is eating any bit of that 120 pounds. So obviously, someone is eating a whole lot more. Right, it's insane. It's we and we don't even we don't even realize it. I always tell people sugar is a sneaky thing, and just by looking on the nutrition label, it doesn't tell us what is in our what is in our food. So it's really important to be reading to be reading ingredients. And I think um, uh, if people have joined our program, then there will be a list of all the different names for sugar. That they put in oh food. yes and there are so many different names for sugar so uh, Mikhail you brought up the you know the addictive uh, you know um, capacity of sugar so uh, would you like to highlight some of that sure so they've done they've done studies on on why why we continue to or our drive to eat sugar and what they have found is that sugar itself, so the taste of, the taste of something sweet, um, it stimulates what we call a dopamine response, which is your reward response. It makes you feel good. We all, we all know that if you're, feeling, if, you, if you're not feeling so good and you have some ice cream or you have something sweet, you might feel a little better or chocolate would make you feel, feel better. And, and we, we've, we've known this, but nobody has actually realized the, the scope of it. And when they've done studies on, um, on, on animals, because it would be unethical to do it on humans, they have found that the drive for sugar actually supersedes the drive for narcotics and for opiates. So sugar is more addictive than cocaine. Sugar yeah. also lights up more areas of the brain. It stimulates more of those reward, res reward responses than, than hard drugs. And the difference is that we all know that there's, a, there's some type of social taboo around uh, doing, doing hard drugs all the time. Sugar is legal. Sugar is a legal narcotic that we consume in insane amounts. And as with any addiction and as with any stimulation of our reward centers, we want more and more and more because it feels so good. And as we consume more, the reward center becomes desensitized. So we need more to get the same result. Yep. So uh, the next question comes. So the two things that we talked about is the fructose in the sugar and the possible association of sugar being an addictive substance. So these are the two big ones. And anyone who's tried to overcome the habit of sugar knows how difficult that is. And Mikhail actually has a wonderful program where she, she does a sugar detox. So another thing that, you know, I've noticed of late, and this was uh, in, in end of December, I had gone, to, gone on a holiday to meet um, friends and relatives. And I realized 
how easily available sugar is everywhere. I mean, back in the days when I was uh, in school, I remember there was just one ice cream shop in, 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 our, in the little town where I grew up. And we had to actually make a, you know, a trip to go there. And, you know, it was only then we got the ice cream. So ice cream was not readily available. You just pick up the phone and call for some ice cream. It wasn't like that. Now, the next thing that is, you know, important is many of you are probably thinking, uh, we are talking about the North American society. So what about India? So this is an article which came out in the journal Diabetes Research and Clinical Practice. Diabetes in Asian Indians, how much is preventable? And you will actually be shocked to know how much is preventable. <laughs> so um, India has the dubious distinction of become, being the diabetes capital of the world. So in this study, what did they find out? And this is one of the authors of the study is Dr. Mohan, who has this big center in Chennai on diabetes. And his center has helped a lot of people take care of the diabetes. So what did they find? See, refined cereals, look at the intake of refined cereals that has gone up and that increases the risk for diabetes. Fruits and vegetables are not such a big deal. Dairy and its products are not so big either. Monounsaturated fatty acid is not that great. but uh, look at television viewing. I mean, you know, from being a homo sapien, we are becoming in you know, a homo sedentarius. And then sitting, we've talked about the sitting disease before. And in fact, uh, this was the, uh, the heading of an article called type two diabetes sits on a chair. So in this article, what they say is, and I have highlighted that bit, their results show that more than 80% of diabetes cases could be prevented if we could modify five factors. Now, what were these five factors? Obesity, physical inactivity, diet, hypertriglyceridemia, and low HDL cholesterol. So hypertriglyceridemia is, again, high triglycerides, which is related to insulin resistance and your carbohydrate intake. And what is one of the best ways to get your HDL cholesterol up is by walking. So sedentariness has you know, made life really bad for people. And a total of 51.7% could be prevented if only diet and physical activity were changed. This is like, this is amazing. This is the kind of, so diabetes is essentially a preventable disease. So in summary, all the stuff that we, Mikhail and I have been talking about. So if you don't want to know anything in the whole video, the only thing you need to focus on is this last one. So sugar can be addictive and sugar is made of glucose and fructose. Fructose is metabolized in the liver leading to liver fat. And beware of high fructose corn syrup. And increased sugar consumption has been associated with insulin resistance, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, fatty liver. So all the bad stuff in the world. So Mikhail, what else would you like to add to that? What I would like to add to that is insulin resistance causes heart disease, obesity, diabetes, and fatty liver. <laughs> yes. Um, oh. So getting our, our insulin um, under control is really important and insulin doesn't only affect your blood sugar it affects how your liver works and functions and detoxifies as well so and and even if you're not changing the rest of your carbohydrate profile the rest of the types of carbohydrates that you're eating simply reducing your sugar intake to as close to zero as possible will make the hugest differences in your health Absolutely. And two of the major things that I forgot to add to this long list is one is mental health. And this was a study done a, years, a few years ago with the, uh, called the Whitehall 2 cohort. And I'm not going into the study, but increased sugar consumption associated with worse mental health. And the other major thing is dementia, Alzheimer's disease. So two of the major ones I left out on that list by mistake, because it, it's like, Everything is related to everything else. Exactly. And I think doing something about sugar and, um, and disease is a whole different video. This, uh, the point of us talking to you today was to explain that sugar is not your friend. And getting rid of sugar is one of the most important steps that you can take 
to reclaiming your health and wellness. Absolutely. And as always, uh, please do not take advice from the video. You need to discuss with your physician. And um, bye now. Until next time. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon.